Hello, and welcome to Brand New Mandela Effects. This may be episode 22, but don't worry, each episode is self-contained, so you don't need to watch them in order. You aren't late to the party, you're right on time. If you don't already know what a Mandela Effect is, or you need a quick refresher, the Mandela Effect is a phenomenon where a large group of people remember something differently than how it is now. It's a seemingly simple concept that can go off the rails real fast, as you'll see in this video. Just remember that every Mandela Effect isn't going to affect everyone. Sometimes only one will blow your mind, and other times every single one of them will. We don't know why this is, but that's the fun of it. Today we're going to be covering The Mona Lisa, Call of Duty, Sugar, Studio Ghibli's Spirited Away, Dazzle Ships, Barrage Balloons, and finally Britney Spears. Timestamps for all of these are in the description below if you want to skip around. So like the video, subscribe now if you haven't already, and let's get into some brand new Mandela effects. The Mona Lisa, the world-famous painting by Leonardo da Vinci, is no stranger to the Mandela Effect. Previously, people have argued over whether or not she is smiling, smirking, or just giving a straight face, a debate that still rages on to this day. But that's not the argument that's going to be presented today. Today we're talking about a growing group of people who have made the claim that Lisa now has a thin, semi-transparent black veil over her head and hair that she previously did not. Take a look at this and tell me what you think. What do you remember? Has the Black Veil always been there? Or are these people mistaken? Or has this strange new addition to history crept in without anyone noticing? Here's an outlandish theory that someone proposed that seems entirely within the realm of possibility. Perhaps the Mona Lisa was stolen many years ago and replaced with a finely crafted fake. If that actually was the case, I could understand a few differences here and there. I mean, the cost of insurance for the Mona Lisa today is valued at $870 million. That's a valuable piece of history. Now, I'm no art expert, so definitely don't take my opinion as fact, but of all the times that I've viewed this painting, I've never once noticed this black veil, let alone how detailed it is. I mean, look at the edges on the left side of her hair. It's exquisitely detailed. One interesting fact from this time period is that a black veil typically signified a pregnant woman or a woman who just gave birth. A very modern theory regarding the model for the Mona Lisa is that she was indeed pregnant, but amazingly enough, this is not the first time that the Mona Lisa was pregnant theory has been floated. In 1959, a British doctor, Kenneth D. Keel, published a paper in the Journal of History and Medicine and Allied Sciences, insisting that the woman in the world's most famous painting had a puffy neck caused by an enlarged thyroid gland, a sure sign that she was pregnant. What do you think about all this? I'm not sure how many people in my audience play video games or have played Call of Duty before, but just follow me here. This gets pretty interesting. Call of Duty is an annualized first-person shooter franchise, with a new release every single year. Because of this form of overwhelming monetization, Call of Duty can make a lot of extra money by playing with people's nostalgia, by bringing back multiplayer maps from older games into the newer games. This Mandela effect stems from one of those situations. There was an older map called Standoff from Call of Duty Black Ops 2, now this map was brought over to the newer Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War video game, so a map from 2012 returned in 2021. Obviously older fans were excited and happily replayed this map again in multiplayer, until a professional Call of Duty player tweeted this, can't believe they just added this sign. And from there, this Mandela effect blew up. One professional streamer or player after another jumped in asking the same question, why remake this entire map but then add this random sign in this random spot in the map? I mean, it isn't outside of the level, it's a real object in the game, so it isn't just art. For example, if you threw a grenade at it, it would bounce off of it. If someone was sniping at you, it was potential cover for you to hide behind. So it's a tangible change to a map, and no one really knows why it was changed. So people went back to the original Call of Duty Black Ops game, and discovered that the sign wasn't just a new addition to the map's remake. It was always there. In both games. To make things even freakier for professional Call of Duty players, fans and amateur sleuths started finding old clips of those same pro players playing on the old map from back in the day. And in those clips existed the sign that the pro players don't remember. I mean, the obvious, easy, least exciting possibility is that the sign was always there and people simply didn't notice it. I'm sure that's absolutely a possibility. But as I'll speak about later in the video during the Britney Spears Mandela Effect segment, fans know their fandom. When it comes to this kind of stuff, you gotta ask the fans. So I sat down out of curiosity and I watched multiple Call of Duty pros and professional streamers freak out over this change. Like legitimately freak out. 
some even claiming that this is the first Mandela Effect that has ever affected them. So however you stand on this Mandela Effect, if you remember the sign or not, I've got to say it's incredible how a sign, a simple sign, can cause so much mental trauma for so many people. Imagine what a massive change would create in people. It's a pretty scary thought. Lastly, I'll say this. In a game like Call of Duty, there are only so many maps in each game. So a part of being a professional is learning every single map inside and out. When you play these games, you play them over and over and over again. Polling from other people on Twitter have shown that a slight majority don't remember the sign being there. So where do you fall? This one's pretty interesting. It's almost a 50-50 split. For those of you who have played these games, I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Is it just a sign or is it something more? I honestly never thought a day would come where I'm making a video about sugar. Could I see myself talking about time travel? Why not? Aliens? Sure. Dinosaurs? Obviously. The super corrupt and broken world we live in? Unquestionably. But today we aren't talking about any of those things. Today, we're talking about a Mandela Effect regarding sugar. I get plenty of comments questioning why the Mandela Effect only changes small things here and there instead of massive things. I disagree with the premise, but I understand the sentiment. Most of the time, Mandela effects are just small changes, but there have been plenty of examples of massive changes as well. This next one regarding sugar affects almost every human alive today, so I'd call that a pretty massive change. Who here believes the idea that sugar makes you hyperactive? Or giving sugary candy to children will give them an energy rush? It's late at night, so you can't have any sugary foods or drinks, it'll keep you up. If you have too much sugar, you're not going to be able to focus etc. I'm sure the vast majority of us grew up hearing this, believing this, and repeating this, but apparently it now isn't the case and has never been the case. Sugar does not make you hyperactive, sugar does not give you an energy rush, and lastly, sugar is not keeping you up at night. Is this just widespread misinformation? Unreliable wives tales passed down over generations? Complete nonsense? Or is this a Mandela effect? For the people that swear sugar gives them an energy rush, this could be a hard sugar pill to swallow. <laughs> Let's get into the details. In 1995, a meta-analysis was published that combed through the findings of 23 experiments across 16 scientific papers. The authors only included studies that had used a placebo and were blinded, which means that the children, the parents, and the teachers involved did not know who had received the sugar and who had been given the placebo. After analyzing all of the data, the authors concluded this meta-analysis of the reported studies to date found that sugar does not affect the behavior or cognitive performance of children. These sugar studies included glucose, fructose, sucrose, glycogen, and cellulose. The result was the same for all of them. Sugar doesn't induce hyperactivity or a rush of energy. All of this is really fascinating, but the most interesting fact that I saw was regarding white bread. The speed we absorb sugar into our bodies is called the glycemic index. The higher a food scores on the glycemic index, the faster we absorb it and convert it into glucose, which is then used as energy. Table sugar has a glycemic index of 65. You'd think, okay, that's pretty high, 65 out of 100. White bread has a glycemic index of 100, the highest possible score, meaning a slice of white bread gives you energy faster than table sugar. Have you ever heard anyone talk about white bread energy before? Getting bread hyper or a bread high? No because sugar doesn't cause hyperactivity or an energy rush. Here's another fun fact. Studies have shown that when children are given a sweetened beverage, the parents are more likely to consider them hyperactive and full of excess energy, even though the science now shows that that isn't true and apparently has never been true. I'm sure a ton of you are scratching your heads right now and saying, no way. I get it. That's a lot of weird new information to take in, but that's why I'd love to hear some parents out there sound off on all of this. Before I stop talking about sugar, I'd like to dispel another possible explanation. It's the idea that sugary snacks cause a brief spike in blood glucose, an effect called hyperglycemia, and that that is the cause of the energy rush and hyperactivity. Unfortunately, the symptoms of hyperglycemia include thirst, frequent urination, fatigue, irritability, and nausea. They do not include hyperactivity or energy bursts. Also, I feel silly explaining this again, but some need to hear it. Try to remember that not every Mandela effect affects everyone. No single person in the world has ever been affected by all of them. Some will blow your mind, and some won't affect you in the slightest, and others will just make you feel unsure and weird. This is okay, we have all been through it, 
Just remember that Mandela effects are based on groups of people remembering things differently. So if you're feeling like the odd one out, just read a bunch of the other comments to get a better overall feel of the population. So what do you think? Is this a Mandela effect? Or have you always known this? If you've never heard of Studio Ghibli, you are in for a treat. Studio Ghibli is an animation studio in Japan and are known worldwide as one of the best animation studios out there. Here in the West, they are commonly called the Disney of Japan. The movies that Studio Ghibli create transcend language barriers and are beloved around the world. Today, we are talking about Spirited Away, the 2001 animated fantasy film written and directed by the legendary Hayao Miyazaki and animated by Studio Ghibli. This next Mandela effect has been known about in Japan for a long time, but is much less known over here in America, so I thought it'd be interesting to talk about. Over in Japan, there is supposedly a missing epilogue to the movie Spirited Away. Over there, this is known as the Phantom Ending, but when you hear all the details, it's pretty obvious that this is a Mandela effect. A ton of people over there remember this Phantom Ending, but apparently it never existed. It turns out there was never an extended cut, and this ending that people remember isn't in any other Studio Ghibli film so they aren't getting different movies mixed up. And most shocking of all is that Hayao Miyazaki himself denied this phantom ending. So where did it come from? Why do people remember this? Well, that's the real mystery. In fact, if you search for this phantom ending, you'll find tons of Japanese people discussing the mystery. I don't want to spoil too much about Spirited Away, because if you haven't seen it, I mean, look at its Rotten Tomato score. Wow. But let's just say that it ends with a tunnel. Now, what people are seemingly remembering takes place after this tunnel. And it isn't just a one-off scene either. If I explained each piece of the missing Phantom ending right now, it would take quite a few minutes to get through all of it. So instead of talking for three or four minutes about something that most people have no idea about, I'm going to have a link in the description to another YouTube video. In this video, one talented creator used Minecraft to create every single scene from the Phantom ending. The comment section over there is filled with people arguing over the ending, and from what I've read, most agree that this video truly captures what they remember. In one bittersweet translated comment that I found, Someone said that the phantom ending of Spirited Away is just that, a spirit that has gone away. So what do you think? Do you remember Spirited Away continuing after the tunnel scene? Or is that where the movie ended for you? Let's talk explanations. Maybe the scene did exist, but it was only shown a few times before it was removed. That's entirely possible, but the writer-director Hayao Miyazaki says that doesn't exist and it never existed. Whatever the case, it really makes you scratch your head. By the way, if anyone out there has any other foreign Mandela effects, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. If I get enough good ones, I'll cover them in a future video. Britney Spears The world-famous pop singer, songwriter, and dancer who blew up the charts in the late 1990s and early 2000s has popped up a lot recently in the news. Most notably though, because she is the subject of a high-profile and court-mandated conservatorship and has controlled the vast majority of her life and finances for the past 13 years. Under US law, a conservatorship is the appointment of a guardian by a judge to manage the financial affairs and or daily life of another person due to old age or mental limitations. What this essentially means is that the family of Britney Spears has had full control over her life and her money for over a decade. The details of this conservatorship have become more widely known as of late and sparked a pretty massive controversy, beyond more than just her fans. All I have to say in regards to all of this is, free Britney. Let this adult woman make her own decisions in life. Mental limitations aren't an excuse to take away someone's freedom. The reason I bring up all these details regarding Britney Spears is because of this heightened media presence, a lot more people have recently been taking a closer look at Britney Spears' life and music. And somewhere along the line, people started noticing some changes from what they remember, specifically in regards to her music videos. This is where the Mandela Effect comes in, and I'm curious to hear what you all remember and what you all think. In the 2000 music video for the song Oops I Did It Again, Britney Spears dances and sings along to her song while wearing a very memorable skin-tight red outfit. The Mandela Effect here is regarding her headset microphone. An unbelievable amount of people online remember this microphone, but as of now, it doesn't exist. Think back to that music video and tell me what you remember. Personally speaking, I wasn't a fan of her music growing up, but my sister was, so I inadvertently heard all of her songs hundreds of times. It felt unavoidable at that time, so that explains the huge volume of people who remember this specific detail. Now, let's be real for a second. A missing headset microphone in and of itself is weird, but it's hardly a mind-blowing Mandela effect. But it gets deeper. 
People have scoured the internet looking for residue and proof of its existence. And you know what? A lot has been found. Let's check it out. Some of the first things found were photos of people who dressed up as Britney Spears for Halloween or costume parties. Of these mini photos, quite a few of them are wearing the red outfit and the now missing headset microphone as part of their costume. It's strange that these people who went all in on getting to look just right accidentally included a headset microphone that she apparently never wore. Weird, right? More interesting still is that the officially released Oops I Did It Again doll of Britney Spears that released in 2000 also had a headset microphone. There was also a deluxe version of the doll that came with a CD of the song also included a headset microphone. Again, it's a weird detail to include considering the original music video apparently never had a headset microphone. It's just everyone seems to think it did for some reason. So next we have a collectible Funko Pop figure of Britney Spears in her red outfit making a pose. This pop figure was first released January 2021. Situations like this are super fascinating to me because so much can be drawn from this. Think about it. We have a toy from when the music video was originally released with a headset mic and now a new toy many years later without one. Meaning the Mandela effect happened sometime between those 20 years. Or everyone is misremembering the music video and she never had a headset microphone. Everyone is wrong, the dolls are wrong, the costumes are wrong, all the thousands of comments on internet threads, and Funko Pop simply did the research and made their pop figure according to the actual music video. There are just so many possibilities. If the video somehow did change because of the Mandela effect, then Funko Pop isn't actually wrong in making a figure without a headset mic. They checked the video and said, okay, no mic. So again, I have to ask you, what do you remember? Another interesting bit of residue fans uncovered or remembered was from the Disney Channel original series Lizzie McGuire. In an episode titled Picture Day, released in 2001, Lizzie McGuire dressed as Britney Spears from the Oops I Did It Again music video, complete with a headset mic. Let's take a look. It'd be so Oops I Did It Again. Mom, Dad, Lizzie's talking about dressing like Britney Spears. Not a problem. I couldn't possibly look like Britney for at least five more years and like five million sit-ups. This fun Venn diagram of Britney Spears fans and Mandela Effect enthusiasts have poured into the comment section of the official music video and have scoured every single frame of it looking for residual details to put their minds at ease. There is nothing worse than feeling crazy, knowing something for sure only to be completely wrong. At least all of those fans can rest easy in the comfort that so many other people remember the headset microphone just like them. After digging long enough, something interesting was finally noticed. There is a moment in the music video where it looks like Britney Spears is adjusting the headset microphone. It isn't a strange action to adjust a headset microphone during intense choreography or while moving around performing, but it is strange for your hand to adjust a headset microphone that isn't there. So let's take a look at that and tell me what you think. Are people looking too hard at this or is there something there? Along with the Oops I Did It Again music video, there is a behind the scenes making of video. There isn't a headset microphone shown or used at any point. If it was there, it isn't there now. So let's talk about some possible explanations. I have five explanations for you. You could agree, you could disagree, maybe you have your own explanation. But these are the ones that I came up with. Number one. People are remembering a different live performance or music video where Britney Spears is using a headset microphone and they're mixing it up with this one. Number two, the doll I talked about earlier was incorrect, but still inspired Lizzie McGuire and tons of fans out there that a headset microphone existed when it in fact did not. Number three, this is all a mass confabulation that thousands and thousands of people are all experiencing randomly at the same time. Number four, Somehow the headset microphone was retroactively removed from the music video and the behind the scenes video, but no other form of media. And number five, this is a Mandela effect. The headset mic at some point was real and plenty of people remember it, but now it simply doesn't exist. What do you think? Stuff like this is especially compelling because kids and fandoms go hand in hand. Like I said earlier, Britney Spears wasn't my fandom as a kid, but rather Pokemon. I knew their names, numbers, type, moves, when they evolved. It was ridiculous how much my dumb child brain memorized regarding what I was passionate about. In fact, there is a 2019 Stanford research study that studied these effects. 
Long story short, with a ton of details omitted to keep this short, they determined that kids at an early age who extensively played Pokemon actually developed a region of their brain to categorize and organize all of these little pocket monsters. Whereas kids who did not play Pokemon extensively did not. All this to say, kids and their fandoms are a beast when it comes to memory. So much so, our brains become permanently altered to remember and categorize as much as possible about said fandoms. Kids easily become obsessed with stuff like that, and that knowledge is typically for life. As an adult, I don't need to know that some random Pokemon like Charmeleon evolves at level 36 into Charizard, but it's there, and I can't delete it. And just like that, this seemingly obscure detail of Britney Spears wearing a headset microphone in the Oops I Did It Again music video, well, I'm gonna trust the experts. The point I'm getting at is when thousands and thousands of kids who were mega fans of Britney Spears grow up and tell me there was without a doubt a headset microphone, who am I to question them? Hello everyone and guess what? As soon as I recorded and edited this Britney Spears Mandela Effect video, as soon as I finished it, news broke regarding her conservatorship battle. So here I am in post, adding in some new details. This is how it always goes for me. I finish a video, and the news literally comes out about the topic I just talked about the next day. It blows my mind. Here's what the news is. Apparently her father is stepping aside as her conservator, but is still arguing that he should not be immediately removed. So on one hand, this is good if her controlling father finally gives up some control over the 39-year-old singer's life and fortune. I mean, this man's allegedly made millions of dollars off his daughter's estate. It's disgusting, and I'm glad he's finally getting out of the way but it doesn't actually solve the problem if some other manipulative person gets put in charge of her life and fortune. The same thing is going to happen. Not to mention all the restitution Britney Spears deserves from all the harm her father and family have caused her over the years. Anyway, it's amazing. I make a video on this and then the next day there's a big change in her situation. Do I have some kind of really lame superpower where if I record a video on something, the legal bureaucracy regarding whatever I'm talking about moves slightly faster? Call me legal bureaucracy man. I can make your legal cases move slightly faster. <laughs> I love learning about history. Not just for the fascinating stories and the shocking events, but for the historical insight gained from learning about history. The more you study it, the more you see patterns and trends popping up throughout history, Strangely enough, when it comes to the Mandela Effect, these kinds of patterns and trends tend to happen as well. Where there is smoke, there's usually fire. Once you find one Mandela Effect on a topic or a subject, the more you dig, you're bound to find more. Well, that is exactly what happened this time. Years ago, I covered the fascinatingly unbelievable concept of dazzle ships, used in World War I and World War II. While most people think of Navy battleships as gray, these ships were actually covered in multicolored shapes and designs. For context, I'm going to play an older clip I made about Dazzle ships from this video, link in the description. Then we're going to come back and build off of that video. So if this clip sounds familiar, that's why. Let's check it out. Think back to when you learned about World War I and World War II. Visualize the massive warships that were utilized back then. Now what color were those ships? Were they covered in abstract designs? Or was it solid colors like gray? What do you remember learning? In World War I, and to a lesser extent in World War II, to avoid ship destruction at the hands of German U-boats, ships were painted in dazzle camouflage. This is actually how history goes now, believe it or not. The hulls of dazzle ships were covered in stripes, swirls, colors, and abstract shapes, reminiscent of Pablo Picasso's work. The idea was that the overwhelming mix of colors and shapes would confuse enemy U-boats looking through a periscope thus making it more difficult to gauge the size, speed, and direction of these dazzle ships. Despite other people's memories, including my own to the contrary, this was a common practice. It started in Britain, but eventually spread to the US. It turns out that dazzle ships were surprisingly effective. So much so, that during World War II, dazzle camouflage was utilized again by the US, and even used on the decks of ships to confuse enemy aircrafts. Does any of this sound right to you? Growing up on the East Coast, and being a big history buff, I've even visited some of these ships. But amazingly, I've never seen one in full dazzle paint, let alone any mention of this throughout history. So all of my education, all of my personal studies, all the documentaries and movies and things that I've watched, nothing. What do you all think? Is this exactly as you learned it? Or is this something completely confusing to you? Recently, I fell down a World War II well of information, and before you know it, I was on the subject of D-Day. 
the June 6, 1944 Allied forces invasion of Normandy, France to repel back the Nazi forces. Cited as the largest seaborne invasion in history, I'm sure the vast majority of you have heard about this before in history books or articles, documentaries, and movies like Saving Private Ryan. Everyone with an interest in D-Day history has seen this shot before. The soldiers huddled together on an LCVD landing craft, mere minutes before the bullets start flying and the craft door opens. But what's that to the left? Is that the tip of a dazzle ship? Yes. Yes it is. So get this, not only are some of the major ships used during D-Day dazzle ships, even a bunch of the Normandy landing crafts and tank carriers are now dazzle ships as well. They are beautifully colored with isometric designs, shapes, and colors. Sure, why not? Everything else seems to change, so why would I think these wouldn't? And here's the interesting thing. If you look it up, you'll find the weird thing is that there are still tons of residue of certain ships and landing crafts that aren't dazzle designs. Some are still gray. But every time I check back on this strange Mandela effect, there seems to be more and more and more. It's almost like it's a Mandela effect in progress, like a slow transition from gray to all of them being dazzle ships. So five years from now, if they are all gray, remember, they weren't always. <laughs> in fact, since I made this original video on October 30th, 2019, the amount of digital content available for dazzle ships has exploded. For example, the clip that I showed you from an earlier video, when I made that, I used nearly every single photo and painting I could find on dazzle ships. It was that rare. That kind of information was really hard to find. But now there are so many more photos and articles about this stuff. Historical Mandela effects are so bizarre because it feels like they randomly come into existence with very few details, websites, articles, and videos available about them, and then they slowly build up a huge repertoire of information. Another big example of this phenomenon is the Black Tom Explosion. The Black Tom Explosion was the first terror attack on American soil all the way back in 1916. It took place in New York Harbor and is now known as the largest artificial non-nuclear explosion in history. The explosion was so big, in fact, that it shattered all glass in a 25-mile radius, including all of Manhattan, and permanently damaged the Statue of Liberty. Damages with inflation are estimated around half a billion dollars today. This seemingly forgotten event until just a few years ago apparently caused America to get into World War I, not just the sinking of the Lusitania. For all of the mind-blowing details, watch my New York Mandela Effects video, then look up this historical Mandela Effect on your own and see how much new data and information has miraculously been added. When I did the original research on the Black Tom explosion, there was one page of results on Google, and nothing earlier than 2012. No joke. Since then, the amount of results for the Black Tom explosion have quite literally exploded. No pun intended. There are so many new articles, documentaries, and somehow unseen black and white photos that simply didn't exist before, at least not on the internet. The Black Tom Explosion is my favorite Mandela effect of all time, so for new photos and details to continually appear a hundred plus years later is utterly perplexing to me. Anyway, back to Dazzle Ships, let's try to be logical here. Could just be that some of the landing crafts were gray, and some were extremely colorful and vibrant for some reason or another, and everyone just didn't notice and we didn't talk about it. I mean, it's possible right? You could also say, well, some ships belong to some countries and some belong to others. Absolutely. No one is disputing that. What is being disputed is their existence entirely. But if that wasn't strange enough, that's not even the biggest Mandela effect regarding this day. People online started noticing something was off with photos of D-Day. Take a look at this photo and tell me if you see anything weird. What caused this off feeling for so many people? Perhaps you noticed it yourself. It's the dozens and dozens of balloons floating in the sky. Do you remember seeing these in photographs or documentaries, reading about them, learning about them, ever seeing an article on them? Well, if not, these are called barrage balloons. And on D-Day, the sky was covered in hundreds of them. These anchored balloons created a cluttered mess above the sky to prevent enemy plane attacks, because oftentimes there were bombs attached to these balloons. Historically speaking, this makes perfect sense. It's a great idea. But the rationale isn't the issue, it's that many people online don't ever remember seeing these before. That's where the Mandela Effect comes in. When I was doing research for something else entirely, and I first came across these photos, it made me second guess myself for a minute, like maybe this is a photoshopped photo, or something else, but apparently it's real, and a lot of people are scratching their heads. So tell me, what do you think about all this? This specific photo right here is my absolute favorite, because it's so nonsensical. I love it, and here's why. It doesn't seem real, but here it is. It's the perfect encapsulation of the term historical Mandela effect. 
So now if anyone ever says, what's a historical Mandela effect? You can just show them this photo or this video. Everyone let me know, do you remember learning about dazzle ships and barrage balloons storming the beaches of Normandy? How do you feel about all this?